It's been an uphill battle for police and bylaw officers trying to shut down this chain of illegal pot shops. The cafe located here on Bloor West, it was raided twice last week as we've been reporting. And as you can see behind me, it's back in business even after the city called in contractors to weld shut the windows and doors. Well, City News has learned that the operators of this black market dispensary appear to have found a legal loophole that's keeping them in business. Just put a screwdriver in and pop it. City News was invited by a lawyer to watch as the city's contractors were called back to this location on Thursday to undo all the welding and reinforcements put in place the day before. City officials have uh, came on the private property and has installed metal doors on the premises, has, has cut the hydro off and has evicted a tenant. Selwyn Peters, a lawyer representing those associated with the illegal pot shop claims someone was living in the cafe's basement and the city had no right to evict. He wrote a letter to police and bylaw officials citing the interim closure rules under the Provincial Cannabis Control Act, which state this section does not apply with respect to a premises used for residential purposes. The law doesn't allow them to do as they wish. Here's where the story takes a turn. According to the city's top bylaw investigator, these cafe associates are pulling out all the stops to stay in business. At that time, I want to stress, there was absolutely no indications or signs of anybody residing there or there being a tenant there. It wasn't until after we had barred the entry and carried out all our authorities that Mr. Peters started making claims that somebody was a tenant there residing in the basement. The head of Toronto's bylaw enforcement, Mark Schrager, tells me when city contractors showed up to take down the welded barricades after claims someone was living there, cafe associates had already broken into the units and were allegedly selling illegal pot in front of the store. It appears a similar tactic is being used at the cafe location on Fort York Boulevard. After being raided three times last week, the city attempted to weld shut the windows and doors, but claims are made that this was also a residence. The evidence, a bunk bed set up in the back room. So officers seized the illegal cannabis, but were forced to leave the unit open. Within hours, cafe was back in business. Schrager tells me the province has been notified of the loophole in its legislation and the difficulties it's creating. I think that, you know, seeing what's going on now, definitely we would want to see some more clearer penalties, uh, more significant penalties for those that knowingly and willingly break the barring of entry order. Now, right now, it's believed that CAFE has at least three locations in Toronto. One uh, at Fort York Boulevard, of course, here on Bloor Street West. And the third one is at Spadina and Harbert Street. Now, coming up a little later on in the show, we will speak to a lawyer about what other legal means a city can use to wipe out these illegal dispensaries for good. A loophole in the Provincial Cannabis Act has created what appears to be a legal a roadblock for police and bylaw officers who have uh, been tirelessly trying to shut down uh, the chain of illegal pot shops cafe. You can see behind me here there are three locations in Toronto, including the one here on Bloor Street West. So what's next as the city explores other legal options to wipe out these unlicensed dispensaries? After the last round of raids on two cafe locations last week, business associates are claiming that the pot shops double as living spaces. And under provincial legislation, enforcement officers do not have the power to evict a tenant or close a unit if it's being used for a residential purpose. Cannabis lawyer Kendra Stanion has been keeping a close eye on the situation and takes a look at what's likely to come next. I would think that the most likely option will be criminal charges. Well, there's a lot of the same penalties with respect to uh, the Cannabis Acts federally and provincially. For the most part, they're focused on financial penalties and they're focused on shutting down operations. They have not been focused on um, creating too much of uh, legal difficulty or especially uh, difficulty with one's very freedom for individuals. But I think if there are persistent lawbreakers that are involved in dispensary matters still, they may find themselves personally criminally charged, in which case you can be 
in custody, you can require a surety and bail to get back out, etc. And those kind of personal consequences might have a little bit more traction for people than just the threat of, of a financial penalty. Okay, because there is a big difference between provincial legislation and provincial charges and then the criminal charges. Certainly, and there's a lot of crossover and people can be charged under cannabis acts and then later be charged criminally for the same conduct. Uh, so there's, there's certainly options, but most of what we're seeing so far is a, a relaxing of charges under the criminal code and an attempt to use the new legislation to affect the changes they want, and we're seeing it's not quite successful yet. Well, the city's top bylaw investigator tells me that the province has been notified about this loophole and the issues it's creating. I'm also being told that other legal avenues are being explored on how to shut down these unlicensed dispensaries for good.